Hey up, Rock God 2004 back with another video for you. Excuse the hair and the now very familiar dressing gown. Um, I've not been great today, I've been a bit. And I, I woke up with a banging headache, so I've had. Um, I have had some painkillers. Um, legs are giving me a little bit of jib, but everything seems to have calmed down a bit now, so. Just ex <laughs> excuse me looking like Wesel Gummidge and. Look like I'm looking for a cup of tea and a slice of cake without salad. So I do apologise. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I've watched over the last week or two. Because it, it's been a caddy bit, I tell you. Um, my wife got me three Severin titles. Um, and I've watched all of them. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with them. Up until what I watched last night, um, and one of them's a repeat because you'll see why. I got I, I got two versions of it. I will explain all that. But yeah, I've watched some absolute crackers lately. Um, some are Blu-ray, some are 4K, and there is a DVD. So let's get cracking. So first up um, is the three that I got for Christmas. Um, I'd never seen this. Wanted this for a very long time. Um, great film. Loved it. And this is an absolutely stunning set. You could only get it over Christmas and then see you later. I'm assuming there'll be a regular edition coming out. Um, and this is Dario Argento's Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Part of a... I mean, they always say it's a trilogy, but if you watch them, they've got absolutely nothing to do with each other. Other than the fact they've got an... Like an animal creature, insect, whatever in the title. So there was like the bird with the crystal plumage, um, the cat, a nine tails, and four flies on grey velvet. All totally different stories, but people call it the trilogy. Flies. This is an absolutely beautiful four disc set. And um, when I opened this, that absolutely creeped the hell out of me um, and where the eyes are as well I don't think it'll show but oh it does look <laughs> it's like they've like embossed it or cut around them which makes it even freakier and uh, there's a little bit of spot gloss in there and you get the title on both sides like that and on the back again this lovely spot gloss for the blood there Um. It was reversible artwork, but I've kept that one because it's English. The other one's like an Italian version. Um, and there's the back. And then you get four discs. Oh, that's the 4K. One fly, which I didn't realise at first. Blu-ray two, disc two, disc three has got three flies and disc four, four flies. So you're getting the 4K. The Blu-ray of the film, the Blu-ray of special features, which I haven't watched yet. And then you get the soundtrack on CD. And that has got the soundtrack listing on. Absolutely beautiful set. Um, and I know a lot of people had said to me, it's not as good as Argento's other, other ones, which I do get. But because people were saying that, I actually thought it was going to be a bit naff. Uh, it's not. It's a great film. It really is a great film. Um, but I do agree with everybody else. It's, it doesn't make it a bad film, but it's not as good as Cat and Nine Tails, Bird of the Crystal Plumage, all of them. Phenomenon. Um, is it Phenomenon or Phenomena? Whichever one. Phenomena. Do, do, but I'll get me caught. Um, yeah, all the others. Uh, Deep Red, um, Tenebrae, that's the other one. But that doesn't make it a bad film. It's still a fantastic film. So if you can get all of this, I highly recommend this, especially this set. So that's Dario Argento's Four Flies on Grey Velvet. The second one I watched uh, is one of the video nasties I've been waiting so long to see. Um, I think it's a section three. Uh, and it's I Miss You Hugs and Kisses. Um, again, beautiful set. Love that slipcover. It's gorgeous. There's no spot gloss on the front. Oh, there is. The title is. 
I thought the red paint was supposed to be. So yeah, you get the title and it's raised. So it's embossed as well. And then you get that on the back. Um, Elk Summer's really good in this. Um, and then on the actual cover, you get the original video VHS. And that's the artwork. Loosely based on a true story. Some of the, like, the names have changed. I'm saying loosely, actually. It's quite accurate. It was based on a true story in Canada. Um, they changed the names, I think. And obviously they'll have dramatised it a little bit more as they do. Um, but you also get this bonus film. Recommendation for Mercy. As well as that. And I tell you what, I enjoyed both of them. They're both true life crime dramas. And they're both so entertaining. Um, and I thought that Miss Yogs and Kisses was going to be rubbish. It's not... Um, there's a couple of gory scenes, like violence and stuff, but I'll be honest with you, how the hell this was picked up as a nasty, I don't know. It's just a really, really good film. Um, I do recommend this one very much. I enjoy this. Very, really watchable. Um, and it's got really good acting and decent actors in it as well. Another reason why I was shocked it got picked up, to be honest. I mean, even the title, it's, it, I miss you, hugs and kisses. I don't know, I just don't know how they picked it up. Um, but yeah, great film. Watch it if you can. I miss you, hugs and kisses. And the third one I got for Christmas from uh, of the wife from Severin. My God, I think you all know by now how long I've wanted to see this. Mardi Gras Massacre. Um, Spock Blossom. back now this is a video nasty and it was a section one so this was one of the outright banned ones i am so glad to have this um i think this was was this reversible artwork no um and it's just one disc you get the blu-ray and you get a severin catalog um it's also been described as um a kind of a remake of Herschel Gordon Lewis's um, Blood Feast. I don't agree. It's nothing like it, really. Apart from the fact that there's like sacrifices to this so called god or whatever, but it's nothing like the Herschel Gordon Lewis film. There's actually some pretty good acting in this, but there's also some really bad acting in it. Now, I was told this is supposed to have been, like, the worst, as in, not gory or violent, but the crappest video nasty. I absolutely loved it. I found it so entertaining. It wasn't slow. It wasn't boring. I just really enjoyed it. Um, to the point I've actually watched it twice. So, yeah, it's... Um, if For people who say this is the worst video nasty, you clearly... Haven't seen Blood Rites slash The Ghastly Ones or Anthropophagus, which is as slow as watching paint dry. Because this is actually really good. The only thing I didn't like about this was the ending. Um, they kind of left it open for a sequel and it never happened. So you just stuck with this. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. If you like the really cheesy crap acting films that like video nasties fans watch you're gonna love it i think um john uh, uh, mondo chalabek um i'll put a link down below to his channel he got this and he said it was like really entertaining he said he had a great time with it and i totally agree this is the kind of film you could watch like a couple of your mates and have a few beers you'd have a great honestly you'd have a great night with it um so yeah i'm over the moon loads loads better than what i expected it to be highly recommended um i don't know how long it's going to be around i don't know whether the issues are all sorted so it's like a permanent thing Seven one isn't there anymore that again that was like four flies on gray velvet it was just on over the christmas thing but the english version's out now on 88 films and it is uncut um, 
but if you're going to get it just in case to be on the safe side i'd get it while i can so that was i've only got one more now on the section list that i don't have so glad to have it that's mardi gras massacre the next one i got really cheap um on ebay and it was sealed brand new um and it's oh, another hammer one I'm, I'm really trying to get more and more and i love them and this is the brides of dracula um apparently the sequel to dracula because it was the next one that came out but it's not christopher lee um and it is nowhere near as good as the christopher lee ones even so it's still a really really good vampire film if you love your christopher lee ones and you love hammer films in general yeah you're gonna really like this one and this is the double player edition it said double player but you actually get three discs so you get DVD disc one. Um, oh no, you don't. So it's actually a double. It's actually a double player. This one, so you do get. The film on DVD with extras. And then you get the Blu-ray as well. So, uh, yeah. Another great Hammer film. Highly recommended. Brides of Dracula. Speaking of John. Um, my partner in crime on the video. Nasty live streams. From Mondo Celebrate Movies. Um, we met up last week. Uh, I think it was last Tuesday if I remember rightly. Um, and... My phone was chocker. I couldn't record anything because I was going to do some footage. Um, but because I'd made the Jaws video and I was having trouble even getting it all together because of the size of it. In the end, I transferred it over the computer and do it all in there where normally I'd just do them on my phone. Uh, so John's shot a little bit of footage. And if you're on Facebook, if you go over to the Mondo Rock group, he's posted it in there. The full uncut one, swear words and all. Um, we had an absolute scream. It was we had a fantastic. I I really enjoyed myself. Went had a cup of coffee, um, had a little bite to eat in there as well, and then we went and tortured them in HMV and CX. I'm not I'm not impressed with that place. Anyway, I got four titles, and the first one I watched was this little beaut, and I used to be scared of this when I was little because it was we're back to those hammer. Universal Double Bills. What a great film this is. Loved it. Vampire Circus. Um, this has only recently just come out in the last week or two, I think. Um, and it's like a sort of a collector's edition where you get this lovely slip. Um, there's the back of the slip. And the side. And the other side. Uh, John was telling me this was we're getting rid of these. These little, I wish they'd bloody hurry up. Um, that was on the inside as well, so I turned it around the reversible artwork. I think it was. Yeah. So I turned it around to that one. And then there's the back again, same as the slip cover. Um, one disc edition and an ice booklet, and it is a nice little booklet that as well. Um, I couldn't remember I couldn't remember anything about this from being little, but when I watched it, wow, far better than what I thought it was gonna be. I didn't think it was gonna be very good because it's not one of the ones that it stuck with me. That it was the main um the main guy who was in the traveling circus with the, the long curly hair. It's him that stuck in my head from being a kid because he terrified me. Um and I remember hating him. And I thought, I want to hate him in this. And I want to hate this film. Wrong. He's, he's a bit dramatic with the acting. Like when he's doing his vampire voice. <laughs> I did laugh a couple of times. But what a cracking film. Um, for a vampire film. I found this one a bit different. Uh, for, for, for like the Hammer stuff. Because you normally. You get like one head guy. You know, like as in Dracula. Or countess dracula or whoever it is it's there's not really anybody like that it's just this traveling 
circus and it is set in like those you know you know those old days when they've got uh, little villages and all you eat is bread and water or bread and wine in the pubs it's, so it's still set in that era it's got that gothic feel to it like they all do um but yeah i mean i got that while i was with john been wanting that for a long time he already had it but his is like an american import but i highly recommend this um great film really enjoyed it so that's um that by circus next one i watched um was a 4k while i was up the hmv end with uh up the hmv end what a dick while i was up john's neck of the woods um in the hmv i got two blu-rays and two 4ks and this is the first of the four i've wanted this for a long time um i bought the sequel to this first because when it came out it had a slip cover in america but it didn't over here so i bought the american one hoping i was going to get the american one of this but it was going for stupid money so i thought nah sorry i don't care um so this was in the two for whatever it was i can't remember i think it was two for 30. beverly hills cop now what bugged me about this is this hasn't happened to me for years but the hmv stickers that they get on the front they normally come straight off it did but as you can see it's took uh i'll find it yeah that's where it's took some of the gloss off idiots never mind i saw this in the cinema when it first came out in 1984 absolutely loved it and i've loved it ever since um, I've had this on video and I've had it on DVD, but I've never owned it on Blu-ray or anything like that. I was waiting and it's come out. I've heard rumours that I'm supposed to be doing part three as well. Exactly the same artwork um, and exceptionally boring discs. Silver. And silver. One's the 4K, one's the Blu-ray. Uh, I didn't watch the extra features, but... The picture quality on this is far better, actually, than Beverly Hills Cop 2. I thought Beverly Hills Cop 2 was grainy than what it, I expected it to be. But this is actually really good. Um, and I never get sick of this film. What a great film it is. So that was the first 4K I watched. I did watch the second one straight after it, so I'll tell you when I get to that one. Beverly Hills Cop. The third one I watched that I picked up from uh, HMV in Gateshead. When I was with John, uh, it's another Hammer film, and I've been after this for so long. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is really good, but it's not as good as I was expecting it to be because I think it's been bowled up. Don't get me wrong, really enjoyed it, and it is very rewatchable. But the scene that I was looking for from remembering as a kid, I've mentioned this before in the live streams. There's a scene where there's a, the, like a, somebody with a hood walking. And it's in the dark and it's like in this ground of this big house or something and when this started i thought this looks very promising and it would have been dark there's like somebody there this vampire just looks up with the mouth open and i absolutely crapped myself as a kid and a few people were saying think it's this one and it's not but i'll keep looking uh and i am glad i've got this because what a great film this was lust for a vampire and i'm trying to get as many of these studio canal ones with the slips that i can and um, Got, got a few of them now um i think my favorite one so far that i've got with the slip uh is probably uh, the reptile loved it apart from whoa apart from the two dracula ones because they're my favorite hammer films anyway um so i've got a couple of the hammer ones like this with the slips as well but yeah lust for vampire and again most of these you get double play blu-ray dvd and the picture on these amazing um these are studio canal would you expect they always release decent stuff um when i first seen her i actually thought it was uh the the the, the lass who used to be in i think she was in heartbeat when it first started but she also played raquel when curly watts was in in uh coronation street it's obviously not her though because it's far too old from before that before her time but yeah, um, I'm assuming if there's any horror, I'm a horror hand. What a damn! If there's any hammer horror fans, you'll have probably already seen this. You know how good it is, anyway. So uh, yeah, another highly recommended one. 
lust for a vampire. Next up, um, I got this as a little prezi off John when I met up with him. Um, because he's got two of this and he's also got the collector's box one of it. Um, I'd never seen it before and it's um, a hammer film. And it's Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. I was enjoying it, but I fell asleep for the end. Because um, it was late and I was tired. So I need to re-watch this again. Um, uh, mainly to see the ending. This is the three disc set. So you get the film on DVD, disc one. And then you get DVD, disc two. Which is the extra features. And then you get the Blu-ray of the film as well. I love these... Um, These hammer ones, this is uh, released by Icon. But you get like, when you get the three disc sets, I just think it's so, so good. It's like you feel like you've got some of for your money. Um, I think the original Dracula was the same. That was a three disc set, I think. They've done a few like that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say from what I've seen of it, I'll recommend it. But I can't, I didn't see the ending. So I need to rewatch it. So that's Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Oh! It does have David Darth Vader Prowse as the monster, although you wouldn't know it because like that's what exactly what it looks like. There's nothing like him. Um, but you probably know that anyway. But I just thought I'd add that in there. So yeah, Frankenstein and the monster from hell. When I met John, also he brought along this title that he got me ages ago. He'd seen it, got me it. I sent him the money straight away, but this is months ago. I've only just got it now. And I watched this, and wow. I thoroughly enjoyed it, because I haven't seen it for donkey's years. And the picture on this was fantastic. Grease. He spotted it with a slip. He knew I wanted it. Um, Quite sad watching it, really, when you realise that, like, Olivia Newton-John was no longer here. It was just so sad. Um... But she always seems so happy as well. Bless her. So enjoyable. I hadn't seen it for years, but I mean, you got a Blu-ray there and the record, the, the disc is made to look like a record, which I find a bit strange. And it's one of those horrendous, boring blue discs for the 4K. But picture's really good in it. It's, in fact, it's great. It's, it's, um, Probably a bit better than Saturday Night Fever, actually, and I've heard a lot of people moan about Saturday Night Fever, but I thought that looked absolutely fantastic. I would say this is, like, a bit better. Um, so, yeah, I uh, if you were thinking of getting the 4K about, uh, of this, I would say definitely go for it. Well worth getting. Grease. The next one's a Blu-ray, which was uh, on offer on Amazon. I think it was, it was something like $12.99, I think, instead of... 16 or 17 99 and I did fancy it um it's a British film um I don't know why it sounds familiar but I, I don't know if it was I don't think it was a section three nasty or anything um yeah somebody can actually correct me about that if it is uh, and it's a film called killer's moon when I first started watching it, it was it it reminded me a little bit of the Kenny Everett film Blood Bass, Bass Bloodbath at the House of Death, but without the humour. It was like that similar setting and that sort of same kind of feel. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. A couple of actually moments of decent gore in it as well. Uh, but it was it was a bit slow. It wasn't as good as what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't garbage. I did enjoy it. Uh, I will probably wait a while before I watch it again. It's not the type of film where I would say, right, that is crap. I need to get rid of it. I'm keeping it. I, I did enjoy it. I just thought it was going to be better. Um, it's got a nice, nice slip case, though. That's the reverse art. And when I seen that, to me, that screams video nasty, but... I'm probably totally wrong, but I know the name of that. I know I'd never seen it, but I know the name of that film from somewhere. Um, and in this one, 
it's a one disc edition so you you get the same artwork on the disc and i reverse the arts because it's all the same artwork um nice little booklet with the original art which i'm assuming is the original artwork and you get like it must be like a UK quad size a certificate X. So it was, it was sort of pre twelve fifteen kind of thing. It was when it was U A and X and double A, and showing you some nice uh, video covers and posters as well. I love it when they do that because it shows you what what it looked like when the original released it. But yeah, to, I won't go through it all. But it's a nice little book. I always say that because what's the point? Um, that's the back of it. And I didn't know this, but you also. Got a poster. One of those lovely hard card, <sighs> freshly printed smelling posters. Um, and it is of the the newly commissioned artwork. Which I think is actually really, really nice artwork. So yeah. Um, if you've seen this, let me know if you know if it is a nasty and also let me know what you think of it i don't really like going into the story of things because uh, i don't like to spoil things for people unless i can give you a quick brief storyline um without spoiling anything but because i've had that many to go through anyway i, I wasn't going to tell you but yeah let me know what you think of that if you've got it or if you've seen it um it's a, it, like i said it is a british film pretty decent but could have been better that's killer's moon the next one uh, that I watched is a DVD which was very generously sent to me uh, by my friend Philip, who on YouTube is Bad Lieutenant. I would have left a link to his channel, but he's the type of person who doesn't actually post anything. I think he's on just because he likes watching. Um, and I, I was, I am, well, I am, I'm not was, I am going to do um, a, a little video of the few things he's sent me in the past he sent me two or three things so i'm going to do a little video but i'm showing this one because this is the one he, he sent me this like a couple of months back and I, it's the first time i've watched this and it's lamberto barber's a blade in the dark and i thoroughly enjoyed it um i am very strongly considering upgrading this one to blu-ray because i really did enjoy it um it's italian horror um did I guess who it was? I don't think it did. I think I, I th the good thing about these Italian horrors is it's not easy to guess the killer. Um, and he has let wrote me one of his little well, I'm saying little one of his essays that he he, he likes to send me. Bless him, uh, which I will read out when I do the video of the other things that Philip sent me. So thank you very much for that, Philip. Great film, and I do appreciate appreciate your generosity. So it's uncut as well because when I seen Vipco, because I think yeah you're known for cutting things, but it does actually say uncut version. Um, I think Arrow are the ones who've released it on Blu-ray, so if you've not seen this, is definitely worth getting. So thanks again, Philip. That's uh, Blade in the Dark. This next one I got from um, Amazon. And I've wanted this since it come out. This is another quite recent release. Um, but I do, I do have it on DVD twice. I've got the um, the American DVD set. And I've got the, not the original, but the later UK set. This, I got this mainly as well. Because I thought this was shot on video. So I don't know how good it's going to look. But the, the extras disc on this for me was worth getting alone. And I'm hoping that the, the couple of episodes that had little scenes cut, I'm hoping everything's back in again. Because uh, in, in the last set that said everything was restored, there was one of the songs missing, but there was a bit with a teddy bear, um, giving it rock all to another teddy bear, and that wasn't popped back in, yet it was on the cut versions. So I'm hoping that's back in. So this is the three disc Blue Row. Blue Row? Blu-ray set of the young ones. I sat and watched uh, series one in one go the other night, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of people say it's not funny anymore. It's dated. I totally disagree. 
it is still funny. It's still one of my favourite programmes of all time. It's still got the legendary Rick Mail in, so what more could you want? I'm dying to watch the extras disc, but I'm waiting until I've watched series two because I'm going to watch the discs in order. Uh, and it's series two where the bits that were missing from the episodes that I'm, I'm wanting to see as well anyway. But this is such a nice set. And for saying it's a three disc Blu-ray set with a nice slip and a fold-out digi pack. This is only 20 quid. I think the DVD was more than that when it came out. So Neil's behind that one, Rick's behind that one, Mike's behind that one. When you get Vivian and when he closes, you get that idiot who I could never stand, Alexi Sale. He's about as funny as being run over on your foot by a bus. He does have his moments, but nine times out of ten, he's just irritable. But when he, when he does the vampire bit in uh, Nasty with the pot noodle, that's funny. But Dr. Martin's boots, for Christ's sake, are we? But yeah, um, I'm hoping they do the same treatment as this, as the with bottom because i would love that so yeah highly highly recommended even though i've only watched the first disc that's the entire series of the young ones the next one i watched was another 4k and it was the one that the um absolutely amazingly generous michael hewitt sent me um clockwork orange uh i must admit this is the most i've ever enjoyed the film because i watched it without any interruptions with no phone and nothing took it all in and i actually understood it a bit more um the picture quality in this was absolutely amazing as well the only thing is because of our telly it's got like oh, that horrible you know when you've been playing a game or on youtube it's burnt into the screen on the opening titles where you see you get you get like the, the totally red screen and then it goes to a totally blue screen the red in the middle it's just got weird dark shapes it's not all red it's all purple and blue and that when it goes to a normal picture it's it's, it's all right it's just when you get like a full screen of colour, it looks horrendous. But um, yeah, it's actually really, really good film. I really enjoyed it. The last time I watched it, it was when I got the uh, premium collection Blu-ray for Christmas. Um, and I put it on on Christmas Day and fell asleep drunk, I think. So there you go. So I, I just haven't got around to watch it again since, but that would save me the trouble. But I think I showed this last time. Um, two really nice looking orange discs. So this is this is the US... 50th anniversary edition and i'm sure it's an exclusive with their artwork somewhere i don't know if it's best buy or something can't remember now or walmart it's one of the two so yeah don't need to highly recommend it because you probably all got it anyway so 4k of clockwork orange the next one i watched i got from ebay and i've wanted this for quite a while with a slip and it's just not out you can't find it anywhere and then i seen somebody um bought the slip off ebay for about four quid three quid something pleased for them but i was gutted because i've been looking for it for ages then this bad boy come up now there's a couple little scuffages on it but nothing to cry about i'm glad i've got this i paid just over a tenner for this 4k with the slip and it's Martin Scorsese's Casino. What a film. However, I still like Goodfellas better. But this goes on for about three hours. Doesn't feel it, but what a film. Robert De Niro. Um, he's definitely one of my favourite actors. I think he's fantastic. I used to hate Joe Pesci only because of that scene he does at the beginning and how horrible he is in goodfellas but because he's like that and he's kind of like that in this but then you also see him in like home alone where he's actually genuinely funny and my cousin Vinny in that i have now come to accept the fact that he is a fantastic actor um i still haven't watched the irishman yet but i'm gonna watch it when i get a chance if I could pick something that really got on my nerves in this film, and it wasn't the acting or the actress, it was the character that Sharon Stone plays. 
Jesus, what a pain she is. Um, but yeah, the, the front of the slip, it's, I mean, that, that, that's about it really. It's a little tiny scuff, a couple of layer, little like markings. It's where it's like scraped against thing. But I've, I've seen worse. Um, and then you get obviously the normal artwork, non-reversible, because it's like very, very rare, if at all, the Universal or Warner Brothers ever do it like that. That looks so old, so they must have just stuck the whole Blu-ray in. And then you get the 4K there. Uh, I've not seen this for years, and I'd only ever seen it once or twice before. Um, so I was actually exceptionally entertained by this when I watched it. And I thought the picture quality on this was fantastic as well. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend both this and Goodfellas on 4K. You do your 4Ks. Uh, 4K review saying that Goodfellas is really bad. It's crap. Don't touch it. Yeah, it's not the best, but it looked pretty good to me. I enjoyed it. Didn't didn't take anything away from my enjoyment of it. I've seen better, but some people are just too fussy, I think. But this looks actually really good, and wow, what a film! So that's Matt Scorsese's Casino. Next up is a double disc, which I got. Uh, off, I can't remember, off eBay or Amazon because again it was only about 10 quid or something um, and I always thought that these were Hammer, they're not, the Amicus um, and wow, what films it's two anthology films it's the double disc of Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror um, I was watching Horror Hands the other day Bryn, I'll put a link to his channel below and he reviewed these as well and he actually showed his amicus horror anthology films off and i didn't know there was that many um but i remember tales from the crypt because that's the one with peter cushion who um he makes toys for all the little kids in the air and they all come and see him after school and stuff and of course they accuse him and stuff and I won't tell you what happens, but he gets deeply upset. He's totally innocent. He has done nothing wrong. He's just a lonely old fella. Lovely old fella. Um, and he kind of does get his vengeance, but it's it's quite a sad one, that one. Uh, and it's also got the original... Um, if you've seen the Tales from the Crypt series, the one where the Santa comes round and it's actually an escaped lunatic. It's the original one with Joan Collins in as well. Uh, the... The Tally series version is much better, but the other stories in this is really good as well. Vault of Horror. I didn't recognise the beginning of it. It was like these men going down in a in a lift. I thought, I've definitely not seen this. Then Terry Thomas walked on, and I was like, oh, if this is that story I remember as a kid, it's the only story I remembered. Terry Thomas, and there was one. It was the end of the story I remembered. And it is the one. I was over the moon. Because I've been after it for years. Never knew what film it was. Um, there's another one I want to get. I think I've got it on DVD somewhere. But I want the Blu-ray. Which is an American import. And it's from Beyond the Grave. The one with David Warner. In. A David Warner sequence. The first sequence. Even for saying it was made in the early 70s. Or late 60s or whatever. It's horrific. But these are so, so good. So, so enjoyable. Um, and it's, it's actually a two disc set when I got it I thought it was both films on one disc but no they've actually put the individual discs in so I was over the moon about that and I love horror anthology films I should do an anthology one video shouldn't I really not just these but like every anthology I've got because I've got some crackers so yeah I highly recommend this um, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror Next up is the second 4K that I got when I was with John. Um, this was one of the ones I fully intended to get, knowing that I was going up to meet him. And it was the only one there, so I thought, right, I'm having that. Um, and that's when I got Beverly Hills Cop with it. That's my only gripe, the fact that that sticker peeled that shiny bit off. I've got this on Blu-ray. And what a film this is. It is an amazing, amazing film. Um, I'm not 
a massive follower of Sylvester Stallone, but from what I've seen, this may well be my favourite Stallone film. Uh, and it's a great prison film as well, Lock Up. I used to watch this back in the day with my dad. Um, I think we hide it on video and I can't remember whether I copied it or whether a sell through title came. I can't remember, but it was a regular watch. Um, and then I didn't see the donkey's years and I forgot about it. And then there was this one and the one with Tom Selleck in called An Innocent Man we used to watch regularly. And they're both amazing films. I'm opening it, Innocent Man gets a 4K release. I got that on import Blu-ray. What a film that is. Um, it's it's right up there with this. I, I, I don't know which one I like best. I love them both. Um, and when I got the Blu-ray of this, I hadn't seen it for years. Oh, God. Me and Laura sat and watched it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. The 4K looks absolutely fantastic. You want to kill Donald Sutherland when you're watching it. He's awful. He's the prison warden. And when you find out the reasons he's awful, it's absolutely pathetic. But I can imagine it happening. This is brutal. Um, they actually use a real prison and real prisoners in the film. Um, and on one of the extra features, if you listen to um, Stallone getting interviewed, he actually says some pretty rough uh, scenes. Like you see them getting tackled and stuff, and it was real. Um, he got roughed up a bit. Like in the film and of it, he's a, I suppose he's a big fella. He probably give as good as he could get as well. Stunning picture discs, and what do you expect? It's Studio Canal. I haven't watched the Blu-ray. Um, I've only had the 4K on. But there's nothing bad I can say about this film, um, apart from things you're supposed to say is bad, like the Donald Sutherland character, and also the horrendous fella who was like the head honcho of the prisoners. When when he goes in, and uh, it's like Jesus, you hate them so much, but they've done their job. That's what that's what they're supposed to do. I can't recommend this one enough. Um, if you like prison films, and you've never seen this. You are definitely definitely in for a right old treat, aren't they, Pete? So that's um, Sylvester Stallone in Lock Up, and the next one is the one I watched again, which I watched earlier. But because of the carry-on that they had coming out, I know Laura had ordered me the Severn one, but I wanted this one as well. So I got the UK version of Maddie Graham Massacre on 88 films. Um, exactly the same. It's got the same menu and the same extra features. And when you play the the um, the documentaries and stuff, it actually says on it, Severn Films Presents. Um, the only difference is at the beginning of the Blu-ray when you put it in, you see 88 instead of Severin. Um, apart from that, the only difference is the artwork on the disc and the packaging, which is really nice packaging, which was another reason I really wanted this as well. Um, you get I won't show you the back. Oh, yes, I will. She's got a brown. You really need to see this if you're a horror hound. Um, that's the reversible art, which is the original cinema art. Same as the Severum one. And it even says on the back, look. Although it says 88 films. It also says Severum on the other side there. So they're definitely in partnership of some description. Um, and there's the disc with the same artwork. And again, when I take the disc out to show you. There's the artwork. It, it's, uh, it comes with when you first open it. If somebody releases a film with artwork that I love, and it's like newly commissioned like this, and then when I look at the original, and you think, God, that looks absolute garbage. I have been known that I like it that much. I keep the original on all, like on the inside, I don't turn it. But nine times out of ten, I always turn it to the original, because you've got sweet so board things. Um, but, but sometimes the original art's so bad, I don't even want to look at it. The one I can think of is Edge of the Axe. I didn't get the slip cover with that. But I like the newly commissioned artwork far more than the I mean the original poster looks like it's just a cheap or film shot on video and it's not. So I, I kept the the newly commissioned on that one. But yeah, I know I've owned it twice. Do I regret it? Do I hell? 
I love both versions and it is such a great film. Get your mates around, get the beers in and just get ready to be entertained to hell. You'll be sort of like, oh, at some of the horror. You'll laugh at the acting and some of the... Some, I didn't notice one shot till I was told that... I'm not going to go into it, but... It was one of the murder scenes where the, the obviously use a false body and apparently you can see the hand holding it in place. I missed it first time round, but I think I glimpsed it briefly on this one. But it adds to it. It's just such a really enjoyable film. Again, for the second time, Mahadi Grand Massacre. And the last actual physical copy that I've watched out of this little list, it's another Hammer film. I got this for £8 something. Um, it was brand new and sealed. It's just that the cover's a little bit dented, a little bit like sort of a little slightly worse than the casino one. Uh, but I'd never seen this, and I thought, right, for eight quid, I'm having it. Because this normally goes for a lot of money. I thought, it's like, I thought it's been deleted or what. And it's Demons of the Mind. And with this being totally different, it's not like a, a monster film. It's not a vampire film. And I thought, this is going to be so weird. Yeah, I wasn't wrong. When it started, it started off really, really promising because it had that same gothic setting and stuff. But this film is messed up. It's 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 not one of the best Hammer films. Um, I don't suppose I'm spoiling anything, but there's there's graphic stabbings which surprise me. This is like this is like sort of early slasher stuff. In parts um, and the way it's done as well it's actually quite if it was like in a more bigger budget nowadays kind of slash it would be nasty um, there's plenty of nudity in it and what was the other thing that I was going to say about it oh um, there's a bit of incest in it. Yeah, it's just, it was made by EMI Films, and you actually see the EMI logo right at the beginning. Even they weren't impressed with it. Um, it, it didn't get like a major release like the Dracula and the Frankenstein films. This, the the put this out as a double bill as the opening feature. And from what I can remember in the bonus feature that I watched, it wasn't even another Hammer film to put it out with. I think they were ashamed of it. They, they just didn't like it at all. Uh, and I do kind of get it because it's, it, it's, I mean, it's different for its time. I thought it was strange the fact that 18, because all of these or most of these are 15s. But it is a bit weird. Um, It's one of them as well where it's going to be a long time before I watch it again. Well, um, I will watch it again when I forget about what it's about. And I'm hoping that second time around I'll um, I'll enjoy it more. Because for me it was... It wasn't garbage, but it certainly wasn't great. Um, it's not on my highest recommendations of films. If you like weird films, you might want to sort of like track it down somewhere cheap. Um... See if you can stream it. See if you can get it cheap, whether it be with or without the slip. Um, it's not one of the ones that I would like be gutted if I didn't get it. Now I've seen it, but because it's a hammer, I'll keep it because uh, I'm trying to get as many as I can because I'm really, really enjoying them. But I'm surprised that Studio can I'll release this one because uh, it's not a patch on all the others that I've seen of theirs. Um, so yeah, it's to date the most disappointing hammer film. I've ever seen Demons of the Mind and finally the one that I don't own legally physically uh, I've got a copy given to me off John <laughs> when I when I met him and he said well if you like it you can buy the blu-ray so he's, he's kind of like saving from going out and buying it without realizing um, and Andy from Forgotten World of Movies. I'll put a link to Andy's channel as well. He tried to warn me, but it was on a live stream, so he kind of had to be careful what he said. 
so because he was being careful, uh, the bit that he was describing to me uh, was far more graphic than I expected it to be. I don't know whether I should tell you or whether I should just go say go and watch it. But it, I was shocked. Um, and there's a bit that John warned me about with the chicken. And I thought, that can't be real. But apparently, according to John Waters, which there's some deleted stuff that he, he presents at the end, apparently he, he says it is real. Uh, which I'm not happy about because, Jesus Christ, it's not pleasant. Um, and the end bit with the dog doings is legitimately all true. It is a definitely 100% real. Because it shows you the dog doing it. There's no break, no no camera movements, no no split, nothing. While it's still doing it, Divine walks over, bends down, then the dog walks off without a single split, scoops it up, then does what you know he does with it. You can see him barking, and I'm just like, oh god, you animal. I know what I would have told John Waters to do if I was being in this film. He told me to do half the stuff that he told Divine to do, but the Divine just must be a filthy animal to do it. So, yet the. For saying they had no money, there's like a couple of the murder scenes, I think. Yeah. Look quite gory. Um, it's not a horror film. I don't think it's ever been put out there or perceived to be a horror film but the fact that I'm saying murders and there's blood and gore, it's not um, but it, they actually look not too good the acting is absolutely atrocious absolutely terrible in it but the worst three scenes in it um, Divine's in two of them um With the extended, uh, the, the the cut scenes that he said were on the cutting room floor that didn't make it into the film. And he's talking in between them as well, but it, it's shown as all one piece type of thing. It's an hour and 50 minutes. The actual film itself is about an hour and a half, but it comes straight on after the end title. Um, And watch them as well if you're going to watch it. It didn't knock me sick, which is what I thought it was going to do. I was, I was you dead when the dog bit was on. But the other two scenes that I'm referencing were just absolute shock. Didn't see them coming at all. No pun intended. That's all I'm saying. Um, it's one of those films that you've got to watch it to say you've seen it. And you've got to see it to believe it. Because <laughs> all the hype that people say about it is like... Nah, I can't. You need to watch it. Um, I didn't hate it. That's the weird thing. Um, from its starting, it 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 uh, it pulled you in. It had me gripped. Crap acting and everything. The grandmother, or Divine's mother, in it. it it's this ugly old biffer who's constantly in this baby's crib thing and eats eggs. Loves eggs. I don't know what Waters was on when he made this, but he, there was definitely something not right up there. Would I watch it again? I probably would, actually. Uh, not in the very near future, but I think you sometimes get in the mood for a certain type of film, and I think, oh, I fancy a bit of sleaze. Then, yes, it would cross my mind, and I would watch it again, especially now I know what's coming. I don't have that little feeling of dread. I didn't have the same amount of dread in me as I did for when I watched uh, Last House on the Left and Goodfellas. Because Goodfellas, like, really knocked me sick. The, the, the stabbing in the back of the boot, the Joe Pesci thing. To me, when I very first watched that, I couldn't eat for about two days, three days, because it looked to me like it was a real murder. I watch it now, and it's like, wow. It's nowhere near as bad as I thought, but it's brutal, it's graphic. It is nasty. But that anticipation of watching that, because I, how I'd reacted first time around, um, I was dreading it. And I actually watched Goodfellas a few times throughout the years, and I, I swear to God, all the horror I watch, 
when that opening scene comes on, then when they repeat it later on, I turned away and blocked my ears. I didn't want to see it, and I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> but now it's like, I can't watch it now, it doesn't bother me. It took a lot of years, though. It wasn't that type of feeling, and last I was on the left, where one of the lasses runs away in the catcher, and what they do to her. It's one of the... It's one of the most upsetting, gory scenes I think I've ever seen in my life for its time. Uh, I mean, it's, it'll be nothing compared to the terrifying stuff from what I've heard now. But at that time, it really let me see because it looks real. Uh, and the blood looks real for 1972. Same year, actually, as Pink Flamingos. But it was what I knew what was in it. It was making me like... Mm. And when I watched it, I was like, well, it, it wasn't as bad as what I thought. It was more shocking than I thought. But, the, I mean, the feeling in my stomach wasn't as bad. But, yeah. John Waters, Pink Flamingos, 1972. Watch it. <laughs> I'd say watch it with caution, but that's the type of thing I say for things like Cannibal Holocaust. It's not that bad. It is offensive. Don't get me wrong, it is offensive. Um, just be careful, but don't don't worry where you think oh, I'm going to feel sick. It's, it, it ain't quite that bad. Um, for me, the bit that made me feel slightly like that if anything, was the chicken. That's all I'm going to say. Um, the other bit with um, with Divine, the two bits with Divine, because Divine's not in the bit with the chicken. But the one, the ones with with Divine in, they were just more like jaw drop shock. Um, even though I knew it was coming with the dog, it still shocked me. But the bit before that shocked me more. Uh, and Andy did warn me that, and I didn't believe him first, so that there's nothing more shocking than what he does with that dog. Oh, yes, there is. And I can't say any more about it. So, yes, that is the end of this video from what I've watched over the last couple of weeks. I hope I uh, didn't bore you to death, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you've watched any of what I've put and what you what you thought of them, what your opinions are. Because I do actually like to read if anybody likes them the same as me or whether they like things different. Um, I do read all the comments um, and I do reply whenever I can, which is usually to all of them. Um, so yes, thank you for watching, all two of you. Um, I do appreciate it uh, and I hope you have got some enjoyment out of this. Again, I'm so sorry about the state I'm in. Um, I'm, I don't feel great. Um, my hair, uh, worth all. But yeah, thank you for watching anyway. I love you all to bits and I do appreciate it. And don't forget, if you're on Facebook, get yourself over to the Mondo Rock group and join. Uh, John's put a little bit of uh, exclusive footage on there for you to watch. Um, I, th I can't think of anything else. If I can, it's too late because I've come to the end. Thank you so much. If you've watched this till the end, I appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, I love you. And thank you very much. I can't tell you how much it means to me and how much I appreciate it. So, yes, thank you very much. All two of you, I'm gone. If you want to find something else to say, thank you. I appreciate every single, appreciate, I appreciate every single one of you and for watching. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon.